Horizon chess won't see reaction. This is <laughs> might save 58 lives next week. By the channel Khazgazad Nutshell. Now, this is a Khazgazad video, and Khazgazad is known for giving you existential crisis many times in many different forms. But this is some next level shit. Just point blank telling you, 58 people of you like, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the title was different, right? Like some of you might not survive type of way, but he, I think he changed the title. And YouTube told me that this might, this might have like some problematic content on it. Are you sure you want to watch it? And it even says it right now. You're not alone. This and that. Call here, call that. So Kuzgazat has gone another level to panic you basically. Right, so I, I'm guessing Kozgaz is going to throw some stat at us, telling us like how certain way we are living, uh, how dangerous it is, and how we might, not, we might not survive some of us, and like how to save yourself, I guess. So this is going to be really interesting. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my channel, don't forget subscribe so that way I know we start videos to react to more. I like scientific video as you already know. I've been watching a lot of Kazakh that video and like others as well, like Veritasium, like Vsauce, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen those reactions, check out the link in the description or in the end of the video end card. And yeah, let's do it. Let's save your life today, not long term, today, by specifically finding out what's most likely to kill you next week, so you can actually avoid it. First, let's assume that 3 million people will watch this video and that you're all among our typical viewers. You're between the ages of 15 and 35 and you're living in Western countries. We base this video on statistics specifically for your demographic and our own estimates. They're not perfect, but roughly correct. Don't worry, we might also save your life if you're older or live somewhere else. Okay, now let's gather all 3 million of you in 40 packed football stadiums. Look around. Most of you are teens and young adults. So much potential. Unfortunately, by the end of next week, 58 of you watching right now will not be alive anymore. 3,000 of you will sadly have passed in a year. That's one in 1,000. Or not. Today, we will save your, yes, your life by looking at the avoidable ways you might die. Every time I see those stadiums, which is for jam packed 80,000, 100,000 people, and I'm like, statistically, a lot of them will not be alive pretty soon. Because I guess that's how statistics work, right? Statistic is one thing, like, it feels really weird to us when we really process it. Like, uh, let's just say I've, I'm a civil contractor, so I go on like active work sites, basically, where I have to wear helmets and things. It's dangerous, dangerous in everyday life. But. Uh, you know, I'll probably be fine there because I know what to do, what not to do compared to like just walking down the road. There is a higher chance I'm going to die just walking down the road than I'm going to die going on a work site. But statistically, work site is much dangerous, right? So, yeah, th there is many scenarios you see like that it's just like dumbfound you. But yeah, statistics is really hard to process, right? Because we see uh, everything as a group, as, a, as like a grander picture. But in local, uh, you know, results might be different. So, yeah, there's many things you say, oh my god, this is insane, I'm probably not going to survive, you know, soon or some shit like that. There are people who, like, do really dangerous activities and probably live, like, 80, 90 years old. We'll not cover long-term things like diseases because we want to prevent your death next week. Your life consists of millions of micro-decisions and some of you are on a path that will end soon. Can we guide you down a different path? Humans are incredibly bad at judging the real risks of life. Bad things happen to people all the time because there are so many of us. And since the news focuses so much on freak accidents, we have a completely distorted Seriously. picture of what actually poses a danger to us. For example, the chance any of you are going to die in a terror attack is below 0.0002%. There are super risky activities that are clearly insanely dangerous, like wingsuit flying. If all 3 million of you were to practice this sport, about 285 of you would die just next week. Then there are things that are pretty dangerous. If all of you rode oh, come on. a motorcycle, 35 of you would not survive next week. If you don't want this kind of... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember one Top Gear episode where Clarkson basically hates bikes and like giving statistic like how... Uh, based on accident how many bikes there are like it's insanely uh, dangerous to ride a bike in England and things basically same thing here as well 
But I'm a bike rider. I've been bike rider since I was like a teen. Before, you know, like mid-teen and shit like that. Even today with, you know, like thousands of super bike and shit like that. I've never been in an accident. I don't, I don't see myself getting an accident ever. Right? But it's like one of the dangerous things you can do. Because it's a bike, especially fast bike. Right? You'll hear about news all the time. The bike I have, literally like three or four people that had it. Bought it around the time I bought it was in an accident and some of them didn't survive i saw the news and like that really panicked me like holy shit that's the same bike right so yeah th th this is really insane especially in india i live in india indian roads right i hear about accidents in that you start the news channel and there's accidents everywhere right somebody died this way died that way you can just google indian accidents you'll find one every day i've been on road for like a long time now since i was a teen i mean like i'm 31 right now not that I've never been, I haven't witnessed an accident, ever. So basically, it's like, you know, sometimes it's just like, like I said, statistics is really hard to process. But yeah, shit like that. Risking your life? Well, don't do these things. It turns out what's most likely to kill you next week are things that feel safe, that you do all the time, and are routine. Things yeah. you may even be really good at. This is what we'll prevent. By far the most dangerous thing you're currently doing is driving. Eight of you will die in a car crash just next week. 416 of you over the next year. Mostly because most of you are not aware what driving really is. You're zooming through the world in a metal torpedo at the speed of a cheetah or faster in an average car that weighs one and a half tons at roughly 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour you have the mechanical energy of a piano dropped from the top of the statue of liberty if you crash this energy is released into your car and more importantly your body 30 percent of deadly car accidents yeah see seat belts right i see i still see people not wearing seat belt it really pisses me off i've always been a physics guy and there was never a time i didn't wear seat belts because i know this Right, and I don't know who who it was, but somebody said like, okay, you wanna think about seatbelt? Okay, fine. How about you run as fast as you can? You physically can. You can't run that fast compared to a car. Run as fast as you can and just like slam yourself against the wall. What's gonna happen? You're gonna end up in hospital. And there's like just like what few like 15, 20 kilometers per hour, whatever the fucking speed is, right? Now imagine that with the 60 kilometers per hour, right? That's what basically is happening. That's how physics work, right? So shit like that, right? You, as soon as you slam, you suddenly slam into like a steering wheel, dashboard, right? That's insane. So you need seatbelt. Even, even at 40 kilometers per hour, you're probably going to be fucked, right? Uh, yeah, there is like, a, you know, uh, airbag. Sure, like airbag is like standard. Airbag will probably save your chest and head, probably. But your kneecaps are gone now, right? A lot of things are gone based on your car. So seatbelt is one thing, like just wear it. What the fuck? Accidents are caused by speeding, mostly because you overestimate yourself. But that will kill two of you next week. It's very straightforward. If you go fast, you have less time to react and only notice the danger when it's too late. A lot of you watching tend to go over the speed limit regularly, which saves very little time. If your destination is 20 minutes away at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, driving 15 kilometers an hour or 10 miles an hour faster will save less than three minutes. But your probability of a deadly crash increases by 60%. So two of you may survive next week if you just tone down your speeding. This alone would have As a kid, I'm pausing too much, but as a kid I've noticed this. I was literally trying to get a place very soon and I was like, it's India, so like nobody in for shit, but like just say like, let's just say hypothetically I was going at 150, 180 kilometers plus, right? Highway, but still Indian highway, so that's not that good. But yeah, obviously my reflexes and everything at the time, I don't know if it's like good or not, but at the time it was really good. And I was like really driving faster and just like got to a place compared to somebody who was like with me, but wasn't driving like that. It literally took like 10 minutes before they catch up. So... That long of a drive, I drew that fast, like, you know, just like race past for 10 fucking minutes. Even I'm, they're like, what the hell, man? I was like driving at 180 kilometers per hour and shit like that, hypothetically. And like somebody who just like 80, 100 kilometers per hour, like after some time, after like, you know, like, uh, you know, driving fast, you know, making, you know, like passes and everything. Uh, really like stressing my head to look at it. Just 10 minutes. 10 minutes is nothing, man. 
So yeah, driving fast is like shit. Like don't just don't do that. I don't do that anymore, right? I'm always like you know like in 800 kilometer on highway, right? I don't try to go that fast because that's stupid, right? It's just gonna hurt you, somebody else, and it's not gonna be that faster anyway. Eliminate the most dangerous activity in your life. Isn't this wild? Close second is drinking alcohol and driving, causing 25% of deadly crashes. In the next week, this will also kill two of you. You don't even need to feel drunk, you just have to have consumed enough to slow your reaction time. Even if you still feel completely in control, chances are high that you're not. Aside from being extremely illegal, it's one of the most reckless and dangerous things too many people do regularly. And it's easy to avoid. Just don't do it, ever. Taking a cab after that work event next week, even if you only had two drinks, might save your life. Just because you were distracted while driving, one of you will die next week. Maybe because you were eating or fumbling with the radio, but let's be real, probably because you were looking at your phone. If you drive at... That one point I don't understand, right? I don't know, because I was OCD or some shit. Every time I'm looking at it, even for a split second I have to do this, I just panic. What the fuck? I have to look ahead. Right? Anybody who's like rode with me in a car always realize like I always look up front. There is never a chance where I just adjust something or even take something. Because a literal panic just go through like, what the fuck? I need to look ahead. So that, that thing never happens to me. I don't know, it's OCD or something. But I've seen people like literally talk. Even they talk like, you can talk like this. What's the problem? They sometimes look at the talk. You're driving the car, what the hell? 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour and check your phone for just a moment, you've now crossed an entire football field, completely blind. Stop doing this and you might survive next week. Lastly, we want to have an especially frank word with the three of you that will die because you didn't wear a seatbelt. What an incredibly stupid way to die young. Way more of you will get into a car crash and be injured for all the same reasons. And of course, often the victims of crashes... Yeah, non-fatal thing is like ringing true in modern cars. Because modern cars are getting, first of all, ADAS. Let's not even like touch that like that. That's literally handicapping you, right? Not, not what is the word I'm looking for? Let, literally teaching you, you know, like treating you like a children, right? Because it will apply brakes for you. It will check the lanes if you're changing or not for safety, great. But there shouldn't, there shouldn't have to be a system like that because you should be looking. If, a, if an electronic computer system literally applies brake for you because you're too stupid to understand that or looking outside. I don't know what that says about humanity, man. That's just fucked up. But yeah, that system exists. Probably going to save a lot of life, right? Most modern cars here has ADA system and things like that. But yeah, the, the modern cars, the how their chassis are made up, right? Uh, they literally make chassis so they're like collapsible, right? If, if, uh, if so, you hit something, the front part will collapse a bit rather than just like, pushing the whole thing inside the cabin, right? That was a big deal. Hummers, people thought it's going to be like really safe. It's the most unsafe car on the planet. Because as soon as you crash, that thing just literally pushes in your chest. You're done. Newer cars are really collapsible. So a cabin stays fine and all the energy is dispersed, right? Which is like, you know, when it comes to like victory of science, that's one big one, right? You can make car safes like that. And then like people are creating, uh, car companies are creating hoods. So if you hit a pedestrian, you probably won't gonna kill them. Because when you really think about it, if a hood is really long, right? If you hit somebody, they just go under your car. The end. But if you, if you make and curve in a way that when you hit somebody, they literally jump to, onto the hood, they're probably going to survive type of way. So car companies are even thinking this thing nowadays, right? Vol I'm pretty sure Volvo started that. But yeah, Volvo also started seat belts, by the way. Not to blame at all, and many of you watching right now will end up hurting someone else. But you now know how to reduce the chances of this happening massively. Let's move on to other deadly things that you can easily avoid. 26 of you will die by falling, or more precisely, by hitting the ground in the next year. Which means one of you will die every two weeks. You'd think the danger of height was not as big of a deal, but it is. Going up ladders, working on scaffolding or on a roof, and going hiking in nature is normal. But falling Six from a height of enough. just two meters has about the same mechanical energy as a bowling ball dropped from a seven-story building. You probably wouldn't want to be hit by it, and it only gets worse the higher you go. For a fall from five meters... Two meters, so that's like six feet, right? Is it? Something like six, seven, six, seven feet, whatever, right? So, if you fall from that distance, right, six feet, you're basically like uh, fucked if you like fall really wrongly or like, you're, you know, you fall in a way that your neck snaps. 
that's just insane, right? I see people, you know, sometimes my OCD flares up and I think about all these things like, what the fuck, how easy it is. Anybody can just like, it's normal everyday thing. People s s climb stairs all the time. People even like, you know, you're like uh, building stairs, right? If you slip and fall, there's a, like, there's a chance you're screwed. Very simplistic thing, make, which just basically just offs you, right? You have to be really lucky or not. And I know there are like systems in human body, like uh, instant reflection systems. Like if you fall, you're suddenly going to do something like that. They're probably going to save you, which is like surprise, right? Otherwise, most of us would be dead by now. But still, there's a risk there. Height of a large ladder, the equivalent would be the energy of a bowling ball dropped from a 19-story building. But even just falling over can easily be fatal because your head is all the way at the top of your body. Another surprisingly dangerous thing is water. One of you will drown next week. Damn, okay. Being in and around water is fun and doesn't seem to be a big deal, mainly for three Wanted reasons. To swim, I don't know. You'll underestimate how dangerous a body of water is and be taken by strong currents or riptides. You'll overestimate your swimming abilities you're most likely a much worse swimmer than you think. Or also sadly common, you'll go into the- Your cardio sucks more than you think mostly. Even if you don't, if you know how to swim and you like get swept with the current, <laughs> swimming against that, your cardio needs to be insanely good, right? Because otherwise you can't find yourself like, doesn't matter what you do, it just pulls you in, right? That's just insane fact, right? Uh, I, you know, I know, I know how to swim, but I try not to go in water because why would I? What am I, five? And like, I'd rather not drown. I don't know. But yeah, the current can really screw you up. And your cardio, probably not going to be that good at that level. Athletic level cardio, most people don't have that. So current can really screw you up. Water drunk, especially dangerous because you're more reckless and even more likely to be overwhelmed by a cold shock or hypothermia. Harmless situations around water turn deadly so quickly that in the US, drowning is the second most common cause of death by accident for kids. After, what? you may have guessed it, car crashes. So if you're going for a swim next week, keep this in mind. Make sure that the water is safe, assume you are at best a mediocre swimmer, and you won't die. Also, for the love- Yeah, cars are really fucked up because I remember there was like a, in US or somewhere, I don't know, like Toyotas had issues where the brakes weren't applying, brake fills were happening left and right. They had to recall. Toyota? If you can't trust Toyota, what the hell are you going to trust? Like for the make of like, you know, uh, reliability of it? Oh, Toyota's probably going to be fine. Oh, by the way, brakes doesn't work. Right? There were some like clips out there where like whole families are screaming last moment clips. Because they know brakes are not applying and like turn is coming. I'm pretty sure like I watched one of the video long ago. I don't know if it's on my channel or not. But that really like terrified me in a way. Just hearing those like panic moments in the end. And I think that was Toyota as well. So that whole thing is just insane, right? Cars are really dangerous when you really think about it. Like things that are not in your control can screw you up. Love of God, be careful on cruise ships. If you go overboard, you have a 60% chance of dying. Let's move on to the thing that will kill the most Don't people watching cruises. this video. This one is extremely sad and very delicate because sensationalist public discussion can make it worse. It's harming yourself. Statistically, about 10 of you could die this way next week. There's something that you might not be aware of that might save your life. The majority of these deaths happen in crisis situations, usually triggered by traumatic events and extraordinary circumstances that overwhelm people and undermine their coping strategies. Studies show that suicide rarely occurs out of the blue. There are warning signs and often suicidal thoughts and feelings can- Oh my god, this is the most intense in today's world. Like, this is the type of thing you can't really sit down and think about it because you'll never know unless you're that place, right? Your psychology can overwhelm you, especially if you're like mental issues. See, our, our psychology works in a way just like amplifies things. If you're depressed, chances of you becoming even more depressed rises up because you're depressed, right? So, you know, the more, the more you get depressed, the more it's like going to be harder to come out of depression or at all, right? So it just amplifies, which kind of feel fucked up, right? Uh, I, I don't know how else to explain that. But yeah, psychological issues, if you have them, you try to cope with them. Nobody would understand, really, like, you sure there's things like therapists and things. But if you have all that, right, like, it, it just becomes more and more and more, right? Mental issues are rising around the world right now, depression especially. 
mostly because of social media and shit but still right uh, i don't know man it's is one of the most fucked up things happening like in modern world if you were to think about like all these issues that we saw in this video which is the one that's like really modern is probably this mental issues because they're rising really high right that's just insane can be mastered by getting professional help for example from a crisis intervention center most people who survive an attempt don't try again and end up being very glad that they did survive it was just way too much for them and they felt desperate and as if there was no way out it would be so so nice yeah so good point right um momentary feeling right can uh, make you make decision that's permanent basically yeah uh, you know there's many instances you hear about that right uh, there were cases in Dudley as well. Uh, so basically, like, uh, so, I don't know, like for whatever issues, whatever like depression, rage, like if you're if you're you know like off that way, right? Uh, your emotions all over the place, right? Emotions can drive your decision and the thought, which is even more fucked up. People are like, oh, I can do this myself, right? I can just do it. Like I don't need to worry. But no, you need therapist. Like you'll never understand it, right? If you have an issue like mental issues like that, right? Doesn't matter how much you hard try to think about it, you'll never understand it because you are the one who has the issue. Like somebody else has to assess you. You need a therapist. In modern world, therapist becoming like much easier to access. Like back then, stigma and things were different. But in modern world, come on, man, right? Even like people who like really active, like uh, you know, like uh, running a company and this CEO and things, mandatory have to go to therapist because that their job is too st stressful like that, right? So yeah. If someone watching this who's in a bad spot decides to get help, you matter, you really do, and the world is better with you in it. Please stay with us. If you currently feel overwhelmed... Yeah, the, see, the, I don't care how much religious, like I'm a, I'm a Hindu basically, right? In, in the Hindu religion, like there says like too many rebirths and things. No, there isn't, right? Doesn't matter who says what, afterlife, this and that. There's, this, there's just this, right? And it's better to exist than not, right? So you just like, you know, like every day, right? You survive, there's a chance things will get better, right? And yeah, th that is the point, right? Uh, I, th I think sometimes this kind of a, like mentality of afterlife and things also contribute badly to these scenarios. Oh, I'll worry about the next life and this and that. No, there is no next life. Whatever is this, this, right? In the end of the day, right? So uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, mental issues are really rising. People really need to like, you know, like, uh, you know, like tackle this situation, especially like uh, larger scale, like governments and things, right? Uh, if, if you can't have like, you know, Medicaid and things like that, at least create something for the mental health where people can get addressed, right? Because this is like a rising, not just rising, but exponentially rising, which is a problem. Who knows where this thing's going to go in like 10, 20 years from now. By life. Seeking help is not weakness, it's strength. We've put some resources for you in the video description. This also means another thing. If you have someone in your life going through a crisis, withdrawing, expressing hopelessness, or talking about this topic, even jokingly, take it seriously. Show them that they're loved and important. You personally could save a life, maybe next week already. You might never know, but worst case, you've been a true friend. Now, for the final thing, and to be- That's the problem with things like this though, right? People who look happy, Will, th there's no sign will be there like they're not happy like you really need to like understand them like really process if something's off or not usually close family members are the only one who can process but somebody will look happy it will just like you heard about the news and things later on like what the fuck just happened right he was completely happy and things like that so yeah people sometimes create this front right because they have to smile for the world type of way like don't do that right uh, suppressing your emotion will just like uh, you know like amplify things you're feeling already which is not good right expression is always better be honest this will not save your life next week but maybe this year cancer is sadly a real risk even for your oh age group God. and will kill five of you next week the most common being thyroid breast and testicular cancer the author of this video had cancer at the age of 32 if he'd been aware of this risk and went to regular checkups, this could have been entirely avoided. Yeah, the third one, testicular cancer. How many people actually check for that, really? 
Like life gets in the way and you don't really check for things like that. And that's like really common one. For men, that's really panicky situation, right? Especially like prostate cancer as well. I'm pretty sure that's men thing, right? Like, yeah, most people just basically doesn't check that unless uh, this is the type of thing. Like you'll notice it when it's too late, which is like panicky situation, isn't it? I'm guessing same thing applies to women, but for the breast cancer, like how many going to check for it? And the day you check and really realize it's like, you know, oh my God, this like progressed too much. Right, cancer is really scary, man. So this is also a personal heartfelt recommendation. We collected a few resources about screenings and self checkups in our sources for you. Check them out. At least one type of cancer is almost entirely avoidable. Melanoma or skin cancer. You might yeah. be surprised how deadly this is, but as a great philosopher said, the sun is a deadly laser. It's burning your skin with the energy. Did he just quote Bill Woods? Why well, that's his name? Yeah, yeah. Man, I hate like he. I don't know why he stopped making videos like that. He was so something about that was so good. He just makes songs and things, which is like also fine. But him like philosophically looking at the world like that, creating video was really good. Released from trillions of tons of plasma. The solution couldn't be simpler. Use sunscreen. It's been a while or you've been in the water. Cool. Apply it again. About nine of you will die of melanoma in the next year. So sunscreen might save your life. Yeah, maybe about sunscreen. Look, if, you, if you're like really light skin, right? Like Con, uh, Conan O'Brien level things. Try to avoid sun more than few minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, right? Uh, look, in India, sun is insanely strong. Uh, that, I don't know how to say that, right? It's hot for a reason, right? This is like 20 degrees in like, uh, you know, north of like equator and things. So like sun rays really hit just right there. But at the same time, you know, like brown skin, right? Uh, so, you know, people like me who's like constantly out in sun, probably, we, we know, there's no cancer or something. Like we don't get melanoma because of this reason, right? It's mostly if you're really light skin, right? If you're from like a places where there is not much sun there and you're born in that places and then like go to some other places where there is a lot of sun there, you need to be careful. That's where the problem usually starts. Okay, let's wrap up. Just by being more aware and modifying your behavior a little bit, you personally could survive next week. Dozens of all of you watching right now. Hundreds of you this year. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell us stories in the next few years of situations that almost turned really bad, but didn't because you behave differently. And if you have people in your life that do or don't do the things we talked about today, please send them this video. It might save their lives too. Life is just the best thing, and we hope to celebrate it together for as long as possible. If you needed a nudge to seize the day, yeah, well, go to brilliant.org forces nutshell. This was a really cool video from Kazakhstan. Uh, yeah, it was really good. Because you feel like, oh, this is like common sense, isn't it? This video, but not really. People need to hear this, especially the one who's affected, right? If you're like, especially like if you have like mental issues, it's like mental issues, like one of the really fucked up ones. Because what you are is your consciousness, your mind. And if you have issues there, like, you won't even understand why you have problems, right? Even the simplistic, simplistic things might confuse you. So it's really fucked up. So even the simple thing like this, like, uh, you know, like point blank saying it is really important. Somebody hears that, it's just like, that would be just enough, right? Uh, there are people who just like, you know, everything goes wrong, right? Everything just goes wrong. And they're depressed, even more depressed, it's like bad spiral. There are way too many people like that out there, right? So even just watching videos like that would be just enough to feel like, okay, yeah, this is good. Well, uh, that was Might Say 58 Lives next week by Channel Cross the Nutshell. Uh, if you like my next channel, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.